on or not anymore. But Streams in the Desert today deals with a subject that a lot of people don't want to talk about. The scripture is, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Second Corinthians 5.1 You know, American culture is kind of funny that way. We really don't like to deal with death much. You know, we have our mortuaries and our morticians who pretty much take the sting or the care out of having to deal with it personally. A lot of times people will hire a death and dying counselor to come in and maybe discuss with them what their options are. Then they'll get a hospice care worker to come in or some type of social worker to give them their options when they're dying. But most families don't like to talk about death. You know, they postpone it as long as possible until they have to go to a funeral and then suddenly it comes crashing in on them. The reality, the termination, as it were, of this flesh that we live in. That this body has to return to the dust. So, in American culture, it's kind of confusing, you know, because it's not an everyday thing that people want to talk about. Now, in the inner cities, a lot of times people deal with death a little differently because they see it. They have seen a loved one either shot or killed or maybe a heart attack or a stroke and had to deal with it in some way that maybe they dealt with it correctly. Maybe. But my personal experience is, frankly, I don't think so. When I was dying, I uh, decided to take a Kubler Ross study because I wanted to be in the ministry of sharing with people that were in the hospital that were suffering from incurable diseases. And so I went to Modesto Junior College and took a class on it. And uh, you needed a what's called a mental health counseling certificate in order to go in the hospitals to counsel. <laughs> Whether you're Christian or not, it didn't matter. You just needed that certificate. They wanted to make sure you had a little bit of handle on what death and dying was all about. But the people that were dying were going through. And in counseling, you know, it's good to have some idea that maybe there are other things occurring besides just the death of a body, but the emotions are being involved in a certain way. So, when I studied the subject, I found it's true. Most Americans really don't deal with death very well. Matter of fact, you can kind of see that by the way that they deal with life, you know, that it's kind of like drive through, hurry up and get it over with, pass it on to someone else. You know, but there's a time to be mourning and a time to rejoicing, a time for sorrow and a time for happiness. And I know for me, you know, I dealt with death personally pretty quickly. You know, I was told that I wouldn't live past 30 and that was a shock. <laughs> now, the good thing was that, see, I was already a Christian, so I really didn't have that much of a problem with dying. It's kind of the suffering part I didn't like. But then, you know, my mother was still alive, and I kind of had those feelings of, you know, thought I'd miss her a little bit, you know, and kind of had those thoughts. And then my mother up and dropped dead on me, you know. <laughs> she was walking out to the, the horse corral one day, and uh, I wound up not dying, but she wound up, you know, going out to feed a horse and dropped dead. Kind of shocked my sisters, who pretty much had used her as a real strong crutch in their lives in some ways and a real strength of support in faith in other ways and suddenly without her there they needed to grow up in their own personal devotion to God and each one of them handled it differently some not so well you are going to die let me be the first to tell you you need to get your affairs in order you need to have a plan just like you have a plan for life, you need to have a plan for death. And you need to kind of realize that one way or another, you're going to die. Whether you be raptured, as it were, and you're hoping to escape that 
time when your body shuts down and you either suffocate in the fluid loss or the lungs quit working. And if you've ever helped someone to pass away, then you know it's not a pretty sight. If you've ever seen someone that you've taken care of for months dying of cancer because they're terminal, you know it's not an easy way to go. Now, for the person that is actually experiencing it, they usually have a morphine drip and, you know, they're gone. They, you know, they really don't understand what's going on. You know, they, they are in a haze of medications that keep them removed from what's really happening to their body. And then one day they just die. They pass away. And it's kind of rough. Then you probably have seen other types of occasions where people suffered miserably and they weren't ready for dying, you know. They were all about living. Well, Jesus talked about death and he talked about life. As a matter of fact, a Christian is as much ready for death, or should be, as he is for life. Because, you see, this life that we're living right now is only temporary. I mean, this isn't the important thing. This is just kind of like we're passing through this life in order to get to where we're supposed to be, which is in heaven and which is into the next age to ages to ages life, everlasting life is what it's called, that we spend in eternity with God. And we have been, as if you've been studying and learning about your God, as about Jesus and learning how to develop a relationship with him, I'm sure he's been talking to you about how this corruption that you're living in, this body that you have, will be transformed, but it will be changed into an incorruptible body, something beautiful. And the hope and the strong confidence we have in faith is that we saw Jesus go up the mountaintop with three of his disciples and he was transformed there. So we know that that can happen, that we can be, in the twinkling of an eye, changed from incorruption, from corruption to incorruption. And that can happen at any point in time. One minute you could drop dead, you know, of a heart attack. And suddenly you'd be, as the scripture tells us, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you see, you need to start thinking about what you really are. Because this thing that you're living in, that you call your body and your flesh and your appearances, really isn't you. It's just a, it's just a tabernacle you're living in. It's a, as a matter of fact, it's a tent, you know, it's kind of like a temporary dwelling place, you know, and you're going to dwell somewhere else. You're going to look like something you don't really know what you'll look like, but everyone else does because they see you in a different way than you see yourself. So while you may see your imperfections, they see you as, if you're a loving person, a loving person, because the Bible tells us that as we are known, so shall we be known. So I hope you're not a bitter person. And I hope that you're talking to your family about death because you shouldn't wait until you die for someone else to talk about who you were. You should take the time right now to sit down with your family, your loved ones, your mother, your father, if they're alive, your children, your spouses, your whatever it may be, and get your affairs in order because you will die. You will be separated from this flesh some way whether it be rapture or death or old age or disease or mortality, whatever it may be, this flesh will not go to heaven. It will be transformed in some way, whether it be by returning to the dust from which it came or by way of being transformed in a twinkling of an eye instantaneously or by suffering and maybe even having your head cut off for being a martyr. But one way or another, you're not taking the body that you live in to heaven. Sorry, it won't go there. And... Uh, because you know that, you know, you might want to spend less time on what's on the outside is what's on the inside. Because what's inside is what's going. So things like peace, love, and joy, you know, you might want to fill up on that, you know. You might want to take that kindness, that gentleness, that meekness, that temperance, those fruits that are going to go into heaven and build upon that to encourage that to grow in your life. Because the things that aren't, aren't going there. And there's a very rare Bible teaching that I read one time and it's kind of, kind of off, you know, I don't know if it's real or not, but 
C.S. Lewis built upon the idea in his Train Ride to Heaven, but the idea was that if you have a lusting and a longing right now for something that's here on earth, like say you're addicted to, oh, I don't know, caffeine or we'll say drugs or we can say anything you want, sex, pride, ego. If one day you drop dead, you know, and you went to heaven, would you still have in your mind that longing to look back to earth? Good question. Or would you be so excited by where you are that you are filled with the joy that is experienced there? That's a good question. Or when you're there, would you hate it so much because you're really so hellish that you're no heavenly good? The question is really for you to determine because, again, there is no getting around it. They say death and taxes are the two things you can't avoid. Well, I think you can avoid taxes, but you sure can't avoid death. And it is a very important subject because, frankly, you will die. So prepare yourself. Get ready. Not just because Jesus is coming, but have your family well grounded and rounded in the Bible and the Word because that's what teaches us and tells us that what we know about death, not what people say they've experienced, because, you know, you, I don't know, you know, it you know, could be true, could be not. I was kind of skeptical, even though I know some of the people that have said it, you know, and I've had some experiences myself on different levels. But the point being is the Bible is the only thing that records an actual person in heaven seeing it for the first time, John, and Jesus describing what heaven is and what the God is, what our Father is like. And he's the only one who has, because he is the Son of God. So, between those two, I think you kind of got a good idea what dying will be like. Because, as much as, you know, we're in the light and we're children of the light, and you hear these stories about tunnel vision and dying and being in darkness, walking towards the light. I don't know, you know? I think I'd rather take being with Jesus, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord, than taking the opinion of someone who's maybe not necessarily accurate, but might have a good idea of what they're experiencing. Because until you've been there, you really don't know what it's like. So I would tell you, don't fear dying, because that's been removed. Perfect love casts out fear. But rather accept the reality that you and your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that you have something to look forward to that's so much better than this world that Keith Green once described it as, this is living in a garbage can compared to what's going on up there. And my anticipation and joy is to look forward to that day. <laughs> but I don't die, I just get to go home. Maybe you need to think about it a little bit more and treat dying as serious. Because it really is about living.